Hey, how are you doing, guys? I'm Dohan here. This is paper two. It is about cross validation. So for today's video, first I'm going to explain to you what is cross validation through an example. Then I'm going to show you how to implement this in code by using scikit-learn library. And here's our outlines for today's video. First, we are going to define our example, why we use data, what is cross-validation, define our task, how cross-validation work, what is index splatter, why we use random.shuffle, make our index splatter. Then we are going to create our dataset, create our kfold object, build our training group, and finally in it. So let's get started. Okay, so let's begin with an example. So here's some data and we want to use variables, chest pain, good blood circulation, etc. to predict if someone has heart disease or not. So if a new patient shows up, we are going to measure these variables to predict if this patient has heart disease or not. First, we have to decide which machine learning method would be best. So this is a classification problem. We could use logistic regression, or key nearest neighbors, or support vector machines, and many more machine learning methods. How do we decide which one to use? So cross-validation allows us to compare different machine learning methods and get sense of how well they will work in practice. So imagine this blue column represented all the data that we have collected about people with and without heart disease. So we need to do two things with this data. First, we need to estimate the parameters for machine learning method and machine learning lingo estimating the parameters called training the algorithm. Then we need to evaluate how well our machine learning methods work in machine learning lingo, evaluating the methods called testing the algorithm. So we need data to train the machine learning method and test the machine learning method. A terrible approach would be to use all the data to estimate the parameters, which is known as training the algorithm, because then there wouldn't be any data left to test the method. So reusing the same data for both training and testing is a bad idea because we need to know how the method will work on data it wasn't trained on. So a slightly better idea would be to use the first 75% of data for training and uh, the last 25% for testing. And we could then compare methods by seeing how well each one categorized uh, the test data. How do we know that using the first 75% of data for training and the last 25% of data for testing is the best way to divide up the data? What if we use the first 25% uh, of data for testing? So uh, for this, we are going to use uh, cross-validation. So what cross-validation is going to do, it will uh, use every block of data for testing and then summarize the results at the end. So for example, in the first loop, it will use the first block here uh, for testing and other blocks for training. And in the second loop, it will use a second block for testing and other blocks for training and so on until all blocks are used for uh, testing. So cross-validation use all blocks uh, of the data one at a time for testing and then summarize the results at the end. So in the end, every block of data is used for testing and we can compare methods by seeing how well they perform. So here's the results of logistic regression, support vector machines, and key nearest neighbors. And as you can see, support vector machines is the best one. And notice in this example, we divided the data into four blocks. So this called for fold close validation. And in extreme cases, we could call each individual patient as a block. So this called leave one out cross validation. So what is K-fold cross validation? It's a popular technique allows you to get most out of your data through ensampling. We can get better predictions because you can run many models on the same source data. Here is my notes, and let's begin with our task. So for this task, we are going to use ImageWolf dataset. And what we need for this task? 
so uh, here we only need our training set and our test set we don't need any sort of validation because we need to know how all of these models are performing so this where our test set comes in okay, so how does validation work uh, let's review what we have covered in the previous example so for this task we are going to separate our data into 90 percent for training and 10% for testing. From there, we are going to take our 90%, which is for training and generate end data sets by slowly shifting what the validation is. So no two models see the same validation data, but all graded on the same test data. So here we import basic version callback library, then we grab our data set. And here we make our batch transforms and item transforms by applying some sort of uh, data augmentation. And for our task today, we are going to use index splitter. So index splitter uh, splits our data into training and validation sets based on list of indices. So it takes a list of indices and splits a data into two ports, one containing the indices specified as validation set and other port for training. And notice we use index splitter because kfold accepts a bunch of indices to declare what our validation set is. Okay, so here we grab our train and test images, then we randomly shuffle our training set. So, um, why we do this? So, if by happenstance one class that not in our training set happens to be in the validation set, then we're gonna throw a mismatch error. It's gonna say I was expecting 10 classes to pop out, but you give me uh, only, only 9. By this way, we guarantee that everything shows up there. Then we print the len of our uh, training images, which is 9025. And then we print uh, our training images. So here is the path of our training images. Now we are going to make our index splitter. For this, we need to define our starting and ending value for when we want to define our validation set. So for this task, we are going to take the first 80% of data for training and the remainder part would be for our validation set. Uh, so here we define our, the starting part of our validation set by subtracting uh, the length of our training set minus uh, the length of training set times 0.2. And here we uh, define our um, our indices from starting to the ending of our training images. Then we pass this indices to our index splitter. Then we pass our training images to our index splitter. And here we turn our splits to a list. And then we add every index after our training images because that's how we expect our test images to be. So here we have 7,224 uh, training, 1,805 for uh, validation, 3,929 uh, for uh, testing. And here we create our data set. So we pass it our training images along with our testing images and the second parameter here specifies um, the transformations. Then we pass it our uh, split list. Here we show a batch of our images. And then we are going to build our CNN learner by pass it our data loaders, our ResN34 architecture and our accuracy metric. Then we are going to um, fit it with one cycle and as you can see here the accuracy is 8% so we need to improve it by using cross validation. So first of all we need to grab our kfold uh, from sklearn.model selection. Then we need to declare how many splits we want. So here we declare that we need to split our data into um, 10 blocks and we pass it uh, to variable kf. Here we build our training loop. So first of all, we create our index splitter with these uh, validation indices. Then we split our training images and convert it to list. 
and add to it our uh, test images and here we create our data set again uh, create our data loaders and call CNN and learner fit with one cycle and here we grab our validation percentage and add it to our uh, val PCT list then we get our predictions of our test set and pass it to our uh, test underscore predictions and here's my notes and as you can see here's the accuracy so the accuracy is improved now let's go through and uh, in sample it so in sampling involve averaging the row predictions from our model and then take the solid mixture that has the best results so first we need to make sure that B has uh, the accuracy that we want so we can uh, double check this by grabbing the first list from our test predictions and pass it to our accuracy function so if we go back to our um, to our first model the accuracy is 23 percent and here is accuracy is 26 percent uh, so we do a little bit uh, better then we go through and uh, make sure that this looks like the same for all of the predictions. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add all of them together. And if we divide all of these uh, by the total number of predictions that we had, our accuracy is almost at uh, 29%. So it increases around 6% from the worst case, which is the first model, the accuracy was 23. And it increases around 3% from the best case, which was uh, 26%. So that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoy it.